Live from WBFF in Baltimore, this is Fox 45 Morning News. Football fans rejoice. The start of this year's season is just days away. After the break, sports agent Doug Eldridge will be joining us live with a look at the Ravens roster. Look at that cutie with him today. It's 8-11. You're watching Fox 45 Morning News. Hi! A local all morning. <laughs> It is 8-14. The NFL season begins this week. The Ravens facing the Raiders in game one. And there's been quite a few changes in the locker room over these last few days. This morning, sports agent Doug Eldridge, founder of DLE Agency and Achilles PR, joining us live with the new look of the 53-man roster. Doug, always great to see you. Are you ready for this? I am. This is this is you know, late yesterday was the last Sunday we're gonna have without NFL football for the next five months. So it's an exciting time. I see. So with that said, what do you think we have in front of us here? Come Monday night when the Ravens hit the field, what do you think about the team we're gonna see? I think it's gonna be a, a reinvigorated and largely reinforced Ravens roster. Unlike other programs which go through a gutting and a complete rebuild seemingly every offseason, uh, the Ravens simply reload, as cliche as the old saying might sound. They've, they're really fortified in some of the weak spots, like wide receiver, their offensive line is now one of the deepest in the league, which is critically important for any team, mm -hmm. but especially when you have a scrambling uh, kind of life uh, quarterback like Lamar Jackson. So they've fortified in all of the right spots. So it, this is a great looking roster for sure. Doug, it feels like the sweet spot here. There's a good mix of some young guys, some rookies coming in and some veterans. Do you feel that way too? I do, but when you when you look at the whole roster cut down process for teams in the league, it's it's surgical, it's very sterile. For players, it's messy. Yeah. They start the preseason with 90 guys and they have to trim 37 players down to the final 53 by August 31st. The NFL does $16 billion a year in revenue. I can't think of another industry that's a multi-billion dollar industry that has a 41% single day reduction in workforce, and it doesn't absolutely cripple the market here in the United States. <laughs> but that's indicative of just how efficient and brutally mechanical the NFL is. You know, you have 1,200 guys that hit the free market, essentially like that. Uh -huh. In terms of how the Ravens have, have maneuvered that, I would say that the biggest bullet on that preseason reduction or, or trade wire was them shipping Ben Bredesen, the big Michigan offensive lineman, up to the Giants. But in large part, I think that speaks more to the depth of their O-line. This is a stacked roster from veterans to young guys looking to make a name. So you're not worried about that trade? I, I, I would never say I'm not worried because you can never have too many <laughs> offensive linemen, right. as the saying goes, and he's certainly a talented one, but the Giants were in need, and the, and the Ravens pulled in some draft picks as a result, so it was a win for them. So let's talk about this. The elephant in the room, we, we've got COVID. We've got some policies in place. Do you think that could impact the Ravens? Obviously, we know that at last check, our quarterback was not vaccinated, had no plans to. Could that impact the team down the road? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're talking about all 32 teams. You know, we saw that last year. Even, gosh, it was the Denver Broncos. I had a player on the roster at that, at that time. They were down to a scout team wide receiver because they'd gone through all three quarterbacks on the roster, either with COVID positives or what's called high risk close contact. And so that can happen at any point, even with the vaccinations, because we're seeing players that have been vaccinated test positive for COVID either for the first time or second time in Lamar. Right. I can't speak to his status, but he certainly had it twice now. So that's that's a, 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 an Achilles heel for, for every team. As a league, I think they're roughly 93 percent vaccination. But there's a huge dichotomy between how players that are unvaccinated and vaccinated are treated and it, and it kind of surfaced this week when urban meyer the longtime college coach mm -hmm. now the coach of the jacksonville jaguars admitted albeit a slip up yes we consider vaccination status and what players we cut and what free agents we sign now every agent knew that was the lay of the land right but nobody had said the quiet part out loud so to speak and all of a sudden everybody was in a kerfuffle and we're saying i've had free agents that are NFL starters that are on the couch because up to that point they hadn't been vaccinated. And so that's always been part of the process. There's a stiff penalty system for unvaccinated players in terms of how they're treated with the code protocol right. and a demonstrably more lenient one for vaccinated players. But no player is beyond the pale and beyond the scope. I mean, the Ravens, they ran into some trouble last year and they got a quarter million dollar fine at the end of the season because of breaking some COVID protocols. So the screws are really going to be tightened this year across the league in terms of how players are dealt with, especially as we're seeing fans being allowed back into state. Mm -hmm. Now, the Ravens kick off on Monday night in Las Vegas, which is a 100% vaccination required stadium. 
I believe, the first in the league that you have to have a COVID passport or proof of vaccination in order to be able to even enter the stadium. So I think in so many ways that, you know, that is the canary in the coal mine. We're gradually going to see that trend spread. There are certainly states and teams and clubs and regions that will resist that. But that's the way it's going, regardless of how you feel about the vaccine. As it relates to the Ravens, they've got a great roster. They've got talent. They've got tremendous leadership in the front office. The one thing that you got to pray for and hope for that you can't control is their health. Yep, and here we go. Full steam ahead, just days away, one week away from their first game. Thank you, Doug, for weighing in. My pleasure. Great to see you.